In this tutorial, we're going to begin working with audio buffers. An audio buffer is an area of the computer's random access memory, uh, or RAM for short, uh, that can be used to record or playback audio. You can create a buffer by creating the buffer object. It's an audio object, so it has a tilde symbol. Um, and after the object name, type a space and then you need to give the buffer a unique name. Uh, the name can be anything as long as it doesn't have any spaces in it uh, and it needs to be unique. Uh, I'm going to call this one buffer1. Having created the buffer, uh, I can then load an existing sound file into that buffer by sending it the read message. This will give me uh, a file dialog box uh, from which I'm going to select this sound file here. Keep in mind here that we're uh, loading this sound file into RAM, so there are limits uh, as to the length of sound file that you can load in in this way. I can now see that that sound file has been loaded into the buffer by locking the patch and double clicking on the buffer object. This will give me a graphical waveform view of the sound file. Before we continue, uh, let's just have a listen to what that sound file sounds like by playing it back in a media player. It's important to note at this point that the buffer object doesn't play back any audio itself. Uh, what we've just heard was an external media player. Uh, all the buffer object does is hold the audio in the computer's memory. To play back audio from a buffer, you need to use another object. There are a number of ways to do this in Max MSP, uh, and in this tutorial, we're going to look very quickly at two different ways. Uh, one way, one method using the groove object, and the other method using the play object. The groove object uh, plays audio back from a buffer and allows you to specify the playback speed. Um, before I can start using it, first I need to specify which buffer I want to play back from. So I give the groove object the name uh, that I gave to the buffer object here. In other words, uh, I type buffer1. Uh, that's why you need to give all of your buffers unique names. So now we're saying that uh, this groove object uh, is going to be playing back audio from this buffer. Now, before I go any further, uh, I'm going to send this message uh, to the groove object. The uh, loop one message essentially means that when the groove object reaches the end of the buffer, it's going to start playing back again from the beginning. Next, I'm going to create uh, a number box uh, in which I'm going to be able to specify the playback speed. One, in this context, means playback at normal speed. Two would play back uh, at double speed. 0 0.5 would play back at half speed. Negative one uh, would play the buffer back at normal speed but backwards. Uh, negative two, uh, backwards at double speed, and so on. Now, I can't uh, send a floating point number directly to the groove object. I need to send the playback speed value uh, as a signal. I can convert this number here to a signal by using the sig tilde object, like so. So if I send uh, a value of 1, and switch the audio on. We'll hear the audio uh, from the buffer playing back at normal speed, and I'll be able to adjust the playback speed and direction by changing the number in the number box.
Moving on, uh, the play object uh, is a different way of playing back audio from a buffer. Uh, again, I need to uh, tell the play object which audio buffer to play back from. I'm going to use the same uh, buffer again. So I will type buffer one here. Um, I can use the play object by drawing a line between the uh, start and the end point in the buffer, uh, as I'll demonstrate. If I send this message here to the line uh, object, it will output uh, sample values starting at zero uh, and increasing to 1000 over a period of 1000 milliseconds. When I send that line to the play object, uh, it will start playback at the beginning of the buffer, i.e. zero, uh, and play the first 1000 milliseconds of the buffer and it will take 1000 milliseconds to do it. like so. It's also possible to record audio into a buffer. Uh, so in order to do that, I'm going to create a new buffer. And again, I need to give it a unique name. Uh, I'll call this one buffer2. Uh, and this time, I'm going to give the buffer uh, object a second argument, 5,000, uh, that means that I want this buffer to be 5,000 milliseconds long. I can then record audio into uh, the buffer using the record uh, object. I need to tell it which buffer that I want to record audio into. It's this one here, so I give it the name buffer2. And then a one message starts the recording and a zero message stops. So we know I can achieve that with uh, a toggle box. So I'm going to record uh, a bit of the output of the groove object. I can see now by double clicking um, on the new buffer uh, that I just recorded that there is now audio inside this buffer. And if I now change uh, the play object so that it's playing back from buffer two and change this message so that it plays all five seconds of the new buffer that I just recorded, I can then listen back to the five seconds that I just recorded into the buffer.